The International Court of Justice will hand down its judgment later Wednesday afternoon. So for more on what to expect, we can cross now to journalist Molly Quell standing by in The Hague. Good morning, Molly. Good morning. So Russia has already snubbed these hearings in the case, arguing that the ICJ doesn't have the jurisdiction because Ukraine's request falls outside of the scope of the 1948 genocide uh, convention. So can you tell us what that convention says and what elements Ukraine has for now to substantiate its case? Yeah, the genocide convention was uh, a post-World War II treaty um, that was set up. Yeah, to, to prevent genocide, it sort of outlaws um, countries or groups uh, trying to sort of eradicate other groups based on nationality or religious um, backgrounds, that, that kind of thing. Um, it's uh, adjudicated at the, at the International Court of Justice, which is the UN's um, high court. And Ukraine has used this kind of creative legal argument saying it's not saying that Russia is committing genocide in Ukraine. It's saying it falsely accused Ukraine of committing genocide, which it used as a pretext for war. What it's asking for today, what the court will rule on today, are provisional measures requests. So these are sort of these initial measures um, that are instituted in an attempt to kind of calm the situation down and make it easier for the court to make a ruling on the merits at a later stage. Uh, Russia did not turn up to the hearings last week. They did submit um, a written argument, uh, essentially saying that the, the court had no jurisdiction on the matter. All right. And so um, if many say that there's a relatively low uh, threshold for this convention, if the court does ultimately side with Ukraine, which many expect to be the case, uh, what kind of power does the court have to coerce the Kremlin into stopping the war, if any at all? Uh, very little. I don't think that the Ukrainian delegation or Ukrainians in general are expecting that a ruling today means Russia is just going to pack up and leave. Um, but it does become part of this strategy that Ukraine has been engaging in um, to try to cut Russian aggression um, since the initial Russian incursions into Ukraine in 2014. They also have a pending case with the European Court of Human Rights. That court has um, instituted what they call interim measures, um, sort of telling Russia that it has to stop. Um, the, these courts have no enforcement mechanism. I mean, they don't have an army that they can sort of send to make this kinds of stuff happen. But it does kind of provide Ukraine with some um, diplomatic and legal um, certainties in terms of maybe down the road trying to get some reparations from Russia for instigating this war, that kind of stuff. Molly Quell in The Hague, thank you very much for that update.